Hey folks, Bitter Steel here, back with another video for Hearts of Iron 4. Today we'll be having a look at one of my personal favorites, Mexico. Now I think Mexico has one of the most interesting focus trees in the game, especially its communist branch. Now, Mexico also has a few fun achievements associated with it, and uh, we'll be going after those today. Now first off, the Revenge of Montezuma. We'll need to take back all the land lost in the Mexican-American War. It's gonna be a tall order. Then there's the new home of the revolution. We'll have to put Trotsky in power and puppet the Soviet Union. Not as difficult as uh, one might assume. And that leaves us with a Sunset Invasion, taking a coastal province in Europe while not being in a faction with anyone else other than our puppets or South American nations were not exactly known for their power. Let's hop on in. Historical on, Iron Man on, and uh, boom. But first, if you like these videos, leave a like, consider subscribing, and check out the channel for some more similar videos. Also, uh, hit me up on Twitter if you're into that, and we've also set up a Discord. So if you want to find a place to hang out and talk Hearts of Iron, maybe set up a multiplayer game, Check out the links in the description below. Now, on to the video. Ah, Mexico. A true paragon of stability, as you can see at 22% stability. 10% war support. Yeah, that's uh, it's not great. We also start off with a bunch of garbage national spirits. Like, all of these are trash. As if that wasn't bad enough, we also start next to the um, biggest player on the block, the United States of America. But we'll deal with that, that's why we're here. First off, we'll start with the army. It looks fairly decent. Let's change all of these to the basic infantry template. Just assign all of it to a, uh, a general. And then split off the two strongest divisions and give them a different general. We have plans for this man. This small army will serve a different purpose later on. The large one can be set to perpetual exercise. We desperately need that army experience. Our production's up next. Three military factories. Well, it's not great. It's not great at all. Oh well, it is what it is. Let's get rid of the CAS. Would be nice if we could get it, but our economy doesn't allow that. We're pretty much going to be pumping everything into basic infantry equipment. Or, well, into guns, really. Maybe we'll add a few factories to towed artillery. We can move that around a little bit, depending on the needs, but mostly we'll be needing guns. And a lot of them. Construction! Let's see, we have a whole... How many do we? Oh yeah, we have a whole five factories. Not terrible. And we'll be using them to just build military factories in our highest infrastructure provinces and we'll sorely need those military factories. You've just seen what we've got. Uh, yeah. Next up, research. We'll be needing to research a few things. I'm gonna start off with the better guns. We'll need better guns soon and the quicker we can start producing them, the faster our efficiency is going to ramp up. We'll also need production. Now for the research here, ideally before we go to war with the United States, will want to have both of these 1938 infantry techs researched to give our troops the edge we need. We will completely ignore support companies, we'll completely ignore tanks, we can do that later when we've conquered the US. If there's time, consider investing a little bit in the interwar artillery. We absolutely must have the first tech of superior firepower. It would be nice if we could get the rest of these as well, but realistically that's not going to happen. Also, we will need transport ships. There will be some naval invasions going on, well, at least one, and transport ships are key. So make sure you get transport ships early. We will completely ignore the air until the American war is done. If there's time, invest a little bit in electronic engineering. Quicker research is pretty good. Other than that, I recommend focusing your industry on production which means production efficiency and the industry. My personal favorite is always going to be this first industry. Now for our focuses, our first goal will be to get rid of General Cedillo down here. Along the way, that will greatly improve our PP gain and more importantly, it will eliminate one of our three possible civil wars. Yes, you heard that right. We run the risk of suffering not one, not two, but three different civil wars. Well. Two are sort of mutually exclusive, but still, not a great place to be. Now, once we get rid of General Cedillo, we will need to balance out the church power. You can see here, the church is currently weak. As a communist Mexico, we can afford a powerful church, 
meaning anything above atheist state is good. If we let it drop to the lowest level, we run the risk of a Cristero uprising. Basically, Christian rebels, sort of. So we need to keep the church happy, or we need to keep our stability over 60%. Either will do. Now, we can do this with some good timing of our focuses and a little bit of luck. So, just follow along and you should be fine. Pretty much, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be going for anti-disestablishmentarianism somewhere along the way. But that's for the future. Let's head down towards arresting General Cedillo. And with our basic setup done, let's dive right in. Ah, as for dealing with the church, every now and then you will get one of these events or an event similar to it. It has two options. One is Resquescha Timpache, RIP for those uninitiated in Latin. This will improve the church power. In this case, bumping it up from weak to assertive. Assertive is great. If we um, tell them to burn in hell, that will bump us down to atheist state and well, uh, not great, really, not great. The first one of these events to pop up, and ideally, actually, even every single one after, we can simply pick Resquecha Timpache, and it would virtually cancel out the civil war. And we do have a few focuses that will bump the church power back down, so I have to keep an eye on that. Never allow it to drop to atheist state unless you can guarantee 60% stability, which I'll tell you is a bit of a challenge when you're at war. So let's just bump this up to a sort of church now. And let's, uh, let's look into our focuses a bit more. So once we've dealt with General Cedillo, we are going to head down, control the army, followed by anti-disestablishmentarianism. This focus opens up a decision in our decisions tab. It's a simple decision that for uh, in exchange for 75 political power, we get to bump up church power by one level. Basically, this means whenever an event or a focus bumps us down to atheist state, we can simply pay 75 political power power to bump us right back up and out of that danger area and since it takes 150 days to trigger the rebellion we'll always have enough time to get 75 political power to take the decision there's only one caveat here we cannot do anti-disestablishmentarianism until we have trotsky in the country that's the one caveat wait with taking this focus until trotsky is in there might be a bit of a weight involved, so take focuses that don't drop your church power below assertive, because it needs to be at least at assertive, until Trotsky is in the game. I hope that's a little clear for you. I understand that's a, it's a lot of explaining. Speaking of all these decisions, take a look at all the decisions we can take. Fortunately, most of these are garbage. The one we are looking at is this one here, transfer lands to church. But for that, we need to have completed anti-disestablishmentarianism. So that's one uh, we'll be taking later on, should the need arise. You can also see the Caudillo Rebellion is ticking down, but it's fine. We'll get rid of the general long before he has a chance to rise up against us. Other things of note here are uh, this one here the improved worker conditions it's the easiest way to get stability uh, you will effectively trade 100 political power for 12 percent stability you can do this once every year or once every 365 days give or take so i recommend taking this if you have the political power to spare i wouldn't bother with any of these church power events except for transfer lands to the church that's the only one that's really worth it all right with that first batch of research done we now have the mondragon mz Zero 08 so better guns let's move on as get our research speed up and our production pumping i prefer to go with this burst industry here simply because of the production efficiency retention it's pretty great if you switch lines around every now and then and switch up our production to the better guns so we can start ramping up that production efficiency now we have a hundred political power we could improve worker conditions for that uh, big stability boost, but I don't think we'll actually need it. I'm going to wait until we have 150 political power and get the military theorist. We definitely need a lot of army experience for what we're about to pull off. And with our research speed improved once, why not do it again? Let's upgrade the research speed once more. A few moments later. Very good, we have arrested the rebel general. Now let's head towards control the army. Now. Trotsky still hasn't showed up, but we can at least do this one. Maybe in the 35 days it takes, Trotsky's gonna show up. If it doesn't, that's fine. We can head down Legacy of the Revolution. This one doesn't mess with church power. So that's another 70 days we have for Trotsky to show up. And our first batch of political power is spent on the military theorists. There we go, we now control the army. 
Sadly, Trotsky still hasn't showed up. Oh well, we'll head towards Legacy of the Revolution first. We now also have 5 army experience, time for our first change. Let's head to the default template here. You can see it's uh, fairly decent, 18 combat width. All we have to do is add one more infantry unit. We now have a 20 combat width, fairly decent defensive template. Ideally, I'd like to add engineers, but we realistically, we can supply those. So that's an infantry division for defensive purposes, ready to go. We're going to duplicate this and uh, give it a new name, something uh, ominous. Yes, these will be our elite shock troops, the units that will be punching through. We will be altering this template as we get more experience and we'll turn it into the poor man's shock troops, which means 14 infantry battalions and four artillery battalions, the classic 14-4. It's not perfect, but it's something we can realistically achieve. And these two units that we split off earlier, these will be the prototype of those units. 20 minutes later. Happy days! Leon Trotsky has arrived in Mexico, exiled from the Soviet Union. Three options here. We can uh, give him asylum. Eh, it's okay, I guess. We can um, extradite him to the Soviet Union. Yeah, we're, we're not going to do that. Or, seeing as he's an organizational genius, we can invite him to join the government. This makes him available as chief of the army. And more importantly, we can later get him as the leader of our country. So we always pick the last option here, organizational genius. And once we have 75 political power, we can put him in place. With this burst industry done, the other techs in this branch are a little bit ahead of time, so let's move over to the naval tree and get our transport ships first. There we go, we now have enough political power to get to Leon Trotsky. The man who built the Red Army will build a new one for Mexico. Now fortunately we got Leon Trotsky in before we finished Legacy of the Revolution, opening us up to anti-disestablishmentarianism next. Now, if in your game the um, the great Trotsky is a little slow to arrive. Consider taking a few of these uh, focuses under the National Bank and headed towards the Ejido worker militias. Something along these lines. These are the good parts of the tree for our communist brothers. Especially this one for the uh, added recruitment pop. So these are some good ones you can do along the way. Just make sure you don't push the church power down to below assertive church. We are lucky, so anti-disestablishmentarianism it is. Now the units that have been exercising are devastated exercising costs a lot of equipment we can't really replenish all of it so we're just going to turn this off they've done their duty they got the templates that we need we'll get the rest of the army experience some other way we need to start uh, fixing this huge deficit anyway now we can push on towards the red shirts followed by international struggle this one will allow us to send volunteer forces to Spain, a great source of army experience. And here's another one of those lovely church events. Either we bump up to powerful church, netting us consumer goods bonus in exchange for stability, or we can bump it down to a weak church for factory output in exchange for stability. You can see where you will be constantly losing stability. We are doing the red shirts now, which will bump us down to weak church. So if we take this event, also bumping us down to weak church, uh, we'll end up with atheist state, meaning we'll need to pay 75 political power. So I'm gonna make a pass on that, we'll bump it up to powerful church, and then the red church will just take it back down to assertive church. All right, we have our transport ships researched, let's head on to the infantry equipment. And in the other tab, we finish the mechanical computing. Let's get production rolling. Meanwhile... Now, one good reason to take improved worker conditions, even though we have secured that uh, Cristero war is that we don't want to be below 50% stability while at war and we're already at only 38 while at peace so more stability would be good. Since war reduces your stability by 30%, we'll need to find a way to get more stability. Red shirts done, on to international struggle. And with international struggle done, we can send volunteer forces to Spain. Now you might be thinking, oh that's great, we can support the Republicans and give them a chance to win the civil war. Yeah, but the units we'll be sending aren't that great and the Republicans will probably end up losing the war even with our help. They're just really bad. It would be nice if we could set tanks that could actually impact these battles but alas instead we'll be sending our troops to the nationalists because those will actually win and uh, we won't risk losing our troops so just send those two divisions that we split off earlier and they can do a lot of fighting in Spain and get us nice army experience as for the national focuses we will head down to 
Revolutionary Class War, Spanish Civil War Refugees, Loyalists of Spain, and then we can pick one of these uh, alliances. But first things first, the Revolutionary Class War. And with our volunteers arrived in Spain, just look for provinces that don't have this modifier, the Unplanned Offensive, and uh, concentrate your forces there to do some fighting and get army experience. Army experience is very important. We need to change our templates as soon as possible. Later. All right, we finished Support Weapons 1, seeing as the 1938 tech is still quite a bit ahead of time. Let's get ourselves the Land Doctrine. Ah, we have another big old batch of political power. Good place to spend that would be limited conscription. We are um, already quite low on manpower and we'll need to recruit some more troops to fight the Big Boss USA later on. Speaking of fighting the Big Boss USA, let's queue up a few divisions. We'll need about five of these regular infantry divisions and two more of these Red Guards. And actually train these Red Guards at a high priority as well. We might force deploy the infantry divisions, but we want the Red Guards to be at least fully equipped before we push these out the door. Alrighty, we have our industry tech done. We have a nice bonus as well, so we can either push down to disperse three, but that will take quite a while. I'd rather get my improved machine tools quicker. Again, maybe this isn't optimal, I just find that this works for me. From this point onwards, we have a few options regarding these alliances. Either we can take Realpolitik, uh, giving us only positive events really, but it does lock us out from the smash the bureaucrats national focus. It's it's pretty good. The Bolivarian Alliance, on the other hand, doesn't give us direct bonuses, but for one, it leads to smash the bureaucrats, which is not bad, and two, it allows us to invite other South and Central American countries to our faction. Personally, I tend to go with the Bolivarian Alliance for flavor. Okay, those machine tools are in. I think radios would be a pretty good idea for that reinforce rate. Very well, we have the Bolivarian Alliance settled. Uh, we could head further down the uh, coastal defense plan and then march southwards. But first things first, we want a communist revolution in our country, giving us a nice stability and war support, more communism support, and most importantly, Trotsky will become the leader of our nation. So, a communist revolution waits for no one. We've also farmed more than enough army experience here in Spain. Just keeping the units in combat really helps. Excellent! The first tier of superior firepower is in the bag. It's not realistic to try and get these other ones until we have that 100 army XP to spend it on. We could start on these support weapons, but a little bit ahead of time and we want to maximize our research. So let's get the uh, interwar artillery here. There we go. The communist revolution is successful. Leon Trotsky now leads Mexico. Or more accurately, the Mexican Soviet Republic. Now let's keep heading down this path here and go for the coastal defense plan. Later. Another good thing to spend that political power on would either be the military high command for the infantry expert or the uh, partial mobilization. Usually I skip these uh, early ones and go straight for war economy, but our war support is pretty garbage and it will be for quite a while, so partial mobilization does seem worth it. And fortunately the Spanish Civil War has concluded with the hated nationalists winning. Our troops are on their way back home and will sorely meet them to invade Guatemala. There we go, the march southwards is completed. It's time to uh, pick the next one. Unify Centro America, giving us more Annex War Goals. Alright, with our military returned from the Spanish Civil War, we are now ready to start conquering our way down the continent. We'll simply line up our troops and start taking out these countries one by one. One thing that might be interesting is to set up a little naval invasion order from this port here in Yucatan down to uh, Panama City down there. Just one unit on there so they can start preparing a naval invasion. The idea here is to push all the way down to the uh, northern border of Panama, making the Panamese go, oh no, we need to garrison this. And then as they send their meager divisions to that border, we simply naval invade Panama City and capitulate them as it's their only victory point. So let's declare war on Guatemala and get things started. Oh, you can see that they are guaranteed by the US, but that's irrelevant because we are also guaranteed by the US and that sort of cancels each other out. And 
interwar artillery in the bag. Let's head to the improved infantry equipment. Oh, and before I forget, let's also update these excellent divisions, these Red Guards, to the final form. This will be the final form of our Red Guards division. This is going to be our um, heavy hitter early game. Now we do have some army experience left over. We can use that to uh, edit this Brigada Agrarista. We can turn this into a bit of a garrison division. Just add a bit of infantry to it and some support artillery. Save that. And we can train up a few of these to guard our ports against the inevitable um, naval invasion launched by the US. We have about seven ports that we need to garrison. We'll abandon the others, so we'll need seven of these divisions. And that's Guatemala out of commission. Next up on the chopping block, Honduras. Simply declare war, walk in. And with Centro America unified, we can head down to seizing the Panama Canal. This will set us up for our war with the US later on. With that done, I suggest we take some time to take stock of the situation. We're not quite ready yet to take on the US face to face. We need a little bit more time. We still have more time. It's still early 1938. The US is still weak enough for us to handle. What other focuses can we take? We can head down these uh, worker militias here for some added manpower. Or we can head over to uh, the Enforce the Kaya's Laws to get ourselves some more war support. That's also pretty great. An extra research slot. Pretty good. I think we'll head down to these uh, worker militias first. That's Honduras out of the picture as well. Take all states and we move ever onwards. Next up is Nicaragua. Hi and bye. And that was even quicker. Now we have or are researching all of the attacks that are required or at least recommended for facing the US. Now's the time to start freewheeling. You can start picking whatever you choose. Just make sure you choose things that are actually useful to us. There's no point right now in researching air. We have no realistic means of producing a significant amount of it. So I'll just go with research. Next up, Costa Rica. Goodbye. God, this is easy. And you can see there's uh, Panama's lone division sitting on the border here. It means they don't have anything in Panama City. So we'll just declare war and send our naval invasion across. And that concludes Panama. All right, so far we've taken uh, most of these uh, weak ones. Now there's just San Salvador left. And uh, well, San Salvador is the different animal. They start out being fascist means they've got a significant lead on the rest of these countries. They have more manpower, they have more equipment, and they start pumping out divisions. Fortunately for us, they're trash divisions and we'll simply take them out. More political power to invest, seeing as war is on the horizon. The infantry expert. This is the basic uh, setup you'll want regarding your advisors. Anything else is gravy, but these are pretty important if you are to face the US. Now, time to deal with El Salvador. Three hours later. And finally, El Salvador falls take their states as well. That concludes the unification of South America, more or less. Now, for the next stage, we will be hitting the Panama Canal. Let's park our best units on this border. The rest of the army can go north and defend against the United States and their inevitable counterattack. We will be giving up Baja California and this one tile of Sonora, and we'll simply dig in along the Rio Grande River. We will be taking these uh, Brigada Agrarista and setting them to garrison the ports. All of our ports, except for the ones in Baja California, will be abandoning the area anyway. The US really likes to naval invade. Now, as for all of these uh, Central American territories we just conquered, um, how about we release those again? I don't want to police them. That will cost us a lot of uh, equipment. And uh, I'd much rather those countries start running through their focus trees. So we'll simply start releasing these guys as puppets. We can integrate them later on via very cheap decisions anyway. Except for Panama. We need to hold on to Panama for a while because we need to control it in order to do Operation Just Cause, which is the little border conflict over the Panama Canal. That's why we have our good units here. We have to hope the RNG system of the Border Wars mechanic picks these units. Now, as we're drawing ever closer to our war with the US, um, 
Once we start offensive operations against the Americans, we will need more divisions, the front will widen and we need to cover more ground. So we'll train up as many of these as we can until we start running out of equipment to do so. We can spam these out once they're trained, we just don't want to spam them out when they're unequipped. So only spam out the ones that are green and fully equipped. So with everything in position, our ports are garrisoned, the Northern Army is ready to fend off the Americans. It's time to hit Operation Just Cause, see what happens. This is going to be the big fight with the United States of America. And because border war mechanics are stupid, we're currently losing this engagement. Oh well, yeah, this is stupid. And a few days after the border conflict, whether you win or lose, the United States will declare war on us. This is it. This is the big fight we've been waiting for. So let's slow the game way, way down. Let's get cracking. Also, don't pull in your puppets. Uh, that just gives the US more, more ports to naval invade. Well, first things first, we need to uh, clean up this little bit here. The Panama Canal. This is a pretty fierce crossing. So if you can't make a push from here, just wait until the US walks into Panama itself and just come up from behind. To the north, situation is looking interesting. I don't think the US has enough troops to man their border. Let's have a look. They are the giants of the continent, but um, they're still on undisturbed isolation. So they're pretty much fighting us with one hand tied behind their back. And they're still a disarmed nation. So they're fighting us with two hands tied behind their back. I think we can do this. Especially given that there's not such a huge discrepancy in force here. They have at most 55 divisions. And I think the game is overestimating that. While we have 35 divisions of superior quality. Yeah, I think we got this in the bag. This will be slow and steady, but we can win. Our plan for the US military is to simply attack them, pin divisions in place, and sneak in through gaps in their line that will form eventually either because they don't have the troops to fully man their front line, or by the time we have our elite divisions in position, they can be used as a punch to get through their lines and create encirclements from there. Also, stability is not looking great. Ideally, you're not sitting below 50% while at war. That opens you up to some pretty terrible events. On the plus side, we do get a nice boost in war support because we're in a defensive war now. The US declared war on us, so that's positive. Now to deal with stability, you can either find it somewhere in the focus tree. There's always, uh, let's see here, focuses like this one, which increase your stability by moving the church one way or the other or simply giving base stability. But while you're waiting for that, you can always take the, where is he? The social reformer, where in exchange for 15 daily democracy support, you get 15% stability. And that's exactly what we need to uh, get out of the danger zone here. So I'm just going to take this guy for a bit and we'll dismiss him when his services are no longer required. suggest concentrating all offensive efforts on the east of the front line. For one, the uh, west side of the front is entirely, or almost entirely mountainous, as you can see here. While it doesn't hold a lot of victory points, there's Los Angeles and San Francisco, and I believe San Diego around there somewhere as well, but most of the United States victory points are on the east coasts anyway. Plus, it's excellent terrain for pushing. Almost all of it is plains, even if there's some big rivers here.
with every one of these little encirclements that's more US troops that will fall and they really don't have the manpower, ironic as it may be, to uh, quickly replace these units. Not to mention the industry, they're so hamstrung by their national spirits and their early economy laws that they're really just a paper tiger. We, we desperately need more manpower. We're sitting at zero. We need some for the garrisons. Oh no, garrisons seem fine. But we definitely need more for the army. Oh yeah, we are about 40,000 men short. Not that many, but we certainly need more manpower. We could go up to extensive conscription. That's a big bump. Uh, the only downside is a more training time. But I think we'll wait for these uh, worker militias to finish. That gives us another... 2% recruitable pop, not bad. And this way we can go up to war economy first. I don't think we need that much extra manpower for this uh, conflict.
right, as the line stretches to these enormous proportions, be careful not to super extend your units because the frontline AI is incredibly stupid and will get your own troops encircled. And it's just a lot of fights to manage and a lot of individual units far apart. So take things slow and try to keep an overview of what's going on. We are definitely going to win this, but I want to minimize casualties as much as I can and not do anything stupid like get units encircled. Okay, 2%, 2%. Uh, if I take Chicago, that's them out. Uh, yeah, that should be possible. Should be possible. Is that enough? Yes, it's enough. Capitulation in three, two, one. The United States has capitulated. That's an end to that war. Okay, great news. Now, we just need to take the states for the achievement. Now, I believe these are the states required for Montezuma's Revenge. I don't feel like uh, capturing the rest of the US. I think it's more beneficial to just leave them and integrate them via the puppet mechanics so we get their fleet. And later on, we'll get cores on this through our focus tree. So we're gonna satellite Hawaii, satellite Puerto Rico and the Mariana Federation. We're not gonna touch the Philippines. If we satellite the Philippines, we're gonna get drawn into a war with Japan. I'd rather avoid that. The Philippines aren't that valuable to us anyway. So we're just gonna leave the Philippines and simply puppet the United States of America. So that's one achievement in the bag. Let's move on to the next one. With our uh, large neighbor under control, we have a few options for dealing with them. The easiest one, is to go into your focuses and down here we can take redeem Aztlan. This will simply annex the um, communist states of America and give us cores on the territories of Texas, New Mexico, Arizona and whatever else we just took. Basically the lands required for the achievement. However, the downside of doing it this way is we will not gain access to the US fleet, which is huge and I'd much rather have the fleet. So I would recommend you simply annex them through the puppet mechanics and just funnel a lot of stuff to them, build in their territory, infrastructure is good, and send them a ton of convoys. As for these uh, smaller states down here, now that we no longer need them as a buffer, we simply wait for them to run through their focus tree. The little generic focus tree has a very good industrial branch, and once you notice that a country has finished all of the factories, infrastructure and um, civilian factories, we can simply annex them for about 50 political power each 
in the Territorial Integrations Decisions. Now to gain access to these decisions, we need to take the focus Integrate the South. And there's a few uh, requirements attached to them. Because I am a massive idiot, I forgot to do this focus before I set all of my puppets free. We need to have at least one of those countries uh, under our command. We'll just take the uh, Panama Canal when we integrate the uh, Americans and after that we can take all of those decisions. We'll also start preparing to take on Papa Stalin in the Soviet Union. We could invade now but that would pit us against the full might of the Soviet Union. We're not quite ready for that yet. What I recommend we do is wait for the Germans to start invading the Soviets and then we'll just make a cheeky naval invasion here on Vladivostok and start pushing our way west and taking all the land that we can before the Soviets eventually capitulate. A good staging point for those invasions is uh, one of these tiny islands. Just build up the infrastructure and the port here and you'll have a relatively easy naval invasion of Vladivostok. Now to prepare for that invasion we'll need to do a few things. First off, research. Now that we have some leeway we can start getting our support equipment, we can start working on some tanks, get more doctrines, and most importantly, we can get the Air Force into a functional state, researching CAS and fighters. We will need more research slots though. Two is not exactly enough, but we can get there through the focus tree. There is a research slot under state education. And there is another research slot under rural schools, bringing us up to two research slots. And I believe there is another research slot down here under television innovators. Though so that's a little bit off still. Three hours later. And after a little more than a year of uh, significant investments in the United States of America, we are able to annex them outright. This will give us access to their fleet and allow us to continue down our focus tree. So, say goodbye to the United States of America. Hello, Mexican Soviet Republic. Now with the United States integrated, we can casually work our way down here to redeem Aztlan, giving us course on at least some of the territory. While preparing our military industry to the utmost, we will be naval invading the Soviet Union soon. Either we wait for uh, the Germans to make the first move, or we get a leg up and go straight for smash the bureaucrats and start our invasion before the Germans do, maybe giving us a bit of a leg up in the eventual peace deal. Choice is yours, really. Oh! Six hours later. And as expected, the Germans have broken the Molotov Ribbentrop Pact and have started their inexorable push east. Now, in current versions of the game, Germany beating the Soviet Union is a done deal. There is hardly any challenge to it. I'm actually going to cancel this and just go straight for Smash the Bureaucrats. There we go. We have completed Smash the Bureaucrats. We are now the fourth international, and it's time to deal with the mustache man himself, it's time to show Joseph Stalin who the real communist leader is. We'll simply declare on them and launch our naval invasion. And naval invading Vladivostok really should not pose any problems. The um, USSR has almost everything focused on their western front and they have almost nothing left in the far east. This is usually a cakewalk. And we've landed without opposition. Time to immediately push out and establish a large beachhead. Now, as your troops advance through the Soviet Union, you'll notice that the East isn't exactly um, high in infrastructure. So what you're going to want to do is use all of that American industry that you've uh, liberated for the people to quickly build up infrastructure and ports as you keep pushing. Got to keep the troops supplied. 20 minutes later. Our advance seems uh, pretty unstoppable for now. Once the front widens, you can start shipping across more armies, though these will be of lower quality troops. There's not much fighting going on in the Far Eastern theater anyway. One eternity later. Well, so far the war is looking good. We have a healthy 27% participation and we're pushing towards the Ural Mountains. It's a slog, but uh, as long as we continuously build infrastructure as we go, shouldn't run into too many troubles. Meanwhile, the USSR has managed to stall the Germans significantly. I would have expected them to have pushed in much harder than this. Oh, Soviet Union's starting to hurt. The Germans are pushing, but very slowly. Meanwhile, we're almost at the Urals from the back door. Let's see how this is going. We have 36% participation, not bad. We've lost 148,000 men. Not great, not bad. Meanwhile, we, we have uh, killed 1.6 million Soviets. Over the Germans have killed 4.5 million. This is uh, absurd, but the Soviet Union is clinging. It's clinging to dear life. So much later that the old narrator got tired of waiting and they had to hire a new one. Well, after almost three years of war, we've walked to the Ural Mountains all the way from Vladivostok. We're so close. And with the Germans taking Moscow, 
that's it. We're in this peace deal. Let's see. Oh, nice amount of guns there. First off, for our achievement, we will puppet the Soviet Union. That's one province in. We have them puppeted. Secondly, we need to take a coastal province in Europe. Now, we can simply take one of these provinces. They're all super expensive. Some of them are affordable though. Luga here is coastal and only 176 participation. So we'll take Luga. Now I don't feel like capturing all of this personally, so I'll just start feeding the Soviet Union some stuff. And with that horrible, horrible peace treaty, we have completed two more achievements. We have the Sunset Invasion because we have a coastal province in Europe the European mainland under our control, Luga here. And um, and the new home of the revolution is also complete. As you can see, our subject, the Soviet Union under Leon Trotsky, as it should be. That's this game done. Now, if for some reason you are not able to take a coastal tile in Europe, in this peace treaty, there's always the option of simply building up the Soviet Union, building up your infrastructure and pulling a reverse Barbarossa on the German Reich. You can build more tanks, you have the massive industrial capacity of America at your disposal. There's realistically nothing they can do to stop you. Or if you want to go another route, you can keep the Soviet Union as a puppet out of the war and simply naval invade from uh, one of your northern ports in New England and hit Iceland. Iceland is almost always in the Allies because the British declare war on them. Hit Iceland and from there go to Norway when you take a Norwegian coastal province that should also fire. God that's delicious border gore. Now if you enjoyed this video hit that like button, consider subscribing for more videos like this and hit me up in the comments with suggestions for achievement videos you want to see, achievements you want to see me try or maybe even if you want to see me play a few mods. I hear there's very good mods for this game out there. If you didn't like the video that's perfectly fine hit that dislike button, hit me up in the comments, tell me what I did wrong, I'm always looking to improve. Now, this has been me, Bittersteel, I hope you've enjoyed this video, I'll see you in the next one, goodbye.